This is part 2 of the ESP8266 Wemos D1 Mini Multisensor Shield project. In the previous video you've learned how to design and build the multisensor shield. In this video we'll write the code and program the ESP. The code for this project runs a web server that allows you to monitor and control the multisensor shield based on several configurable settings. This project was sponsored by JLC PCV. JLCPCB is a PCB prototype company in China. It is specialized in quick PCB prototype and small batch production. You can order a minimum of 10 PCBs for just $2. To get your PCB for this project, you just need to upload your Gerber files to the JLCPCB website. If you go to jlcpcb.com, click the Quote Now button and upload the .zip file with the Gerber files, you can order 10 PCBs for just $2 in your first order. Let's continue with this project. The web server we'll build allows you to choose between 4 different modes to control the relay. Manual, in which you have a button to turn the relay on and off. Auto appear mode, turns the relay on when motion is detected. In this mode there is a field in which you can set the number of seconds the output will be on after motion is detected. LDR, the relay turns on when the luminosity goes below a certain threshold. You can set an LDR threshold value between 0 and 100%. Auto PR and LDR, this mode combines the PR motion sensor and the LDR. When this mode is selected, the relay turns on when the PR sensor detects motion and if the luminosity value is below the threshold. In this mode you can set the timer and the LDR threshold value. In the web server there is also a button that you can press to request a temperature reading. You can press the remove sensor readings button to hide the readings to optimize the web server performance. In every mode there is a label that shows the select mode, as well as the current output state. We want the ESP8266 to remember the last output state and the settings, in case it resets or suddenly loses power. So we need to save those parameters in the ESP8266 EEPROM. Before uploading the code, you need to install the Dallas Temperature Library and the OneWire Library to read from the DS18B20 temperature sensor. You can visit the project page for more information on how to install these libraries. Copy the code provided in the project page to the Arduino IDE. This code is quite long to explain so you can simply replace these two next variables with your network credentials and the code will work straight away. If you want to learn how this code works, continue watching this video. Start by including the necessary libraries. The Wi-Fi library is needed to use the ESP Wi-Fi capabilities. The EEPROM library allows you to read and write permanent data on the ESP EEPROM. And the OneWire and Dallas temperature libraries allow you to read the temperature from the DS18B20 temperature sensor. You need to add your network credentials in these two variables. These are auxiliary variables to store the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Next, we define the EEPROM size we want to access. We'll need to save four variables in the flash memory. The last output state on address 0, the select mode on address 1, the timer value on address 2 and the LDR threshold value on address 3, so we need 4 bytes in the flash memory. In this section we define the GPIOs for the output, the status LED, PR motion sensor and the LDR. We also create a string variable to hold the output state to be displayed on the web server. Next we create the instances needed for the temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is connected to GPIO4. Next we create auxiliary variables for the timers. Here we initialize variables to start the select mode and settings. The following snippet of code is related to the web server. You can follow the ESP8266 web server tutorial to get you familiar with the basic web server code. In the setup, Start by initializing the DS18B20 temperature sensor. Initialize the serial port at a baud rate of 1150-00 for debugging purposes. Set the PR motion sensor as an input pull-up. 
and define it as an interrupt in rising mode. This part of the code initializes the flash memory with the EEPROM size defined earlier, and reads the bytes stored. Set the status LED and the output pin as outputs. We're controlling a relay with inverted logic, so we start by setting it to I, so it's actually turned off. Then, set the output to the last saved state. The output state is saved on position 0, so we use eeprom.read0. We check if the state saved is on or off to update the output state accordingly. We also update all variables that hold settings with the values saved in the eeprom, like the select mode, timer, and LDR threshold value. Then, we call the configure mode function to assign the right values to each mode. Let's take a look at how this function works. If the select mode is manual, the motion is not activated, neither the LDR. A similar process is done to configure the other modes. You can change the ARM variables to activate or deactivate a sensor. Now, let's go back to the setup. Here, we connect to the Wi-Fi network and print a ESP8266 IP address in the serial monitor. In the loop, we display the web server and make things happen accordingly to the select mode and settings. We've covered web servers in great detail in the ESP8266 web server tutorial. So, we'll just take a look at the parts that are more relevant for this project. This part of the code is easier to understand if we explain what's happening with a live demonstration. When you access the web server, you'll see a similar web page. At the top, you can select one of these four different modes Manual, Auto Peer, Auto LDR, Auto Peer, and LDR. For example, if you choose Manual mode, the following part of the code is being executed. It saves the select mode in the select mode variable and stores it in the flash memory with the eeprom.write function. The web page look changes accordingly to the select mode. In this case, since we've selected the manual mode that corresponds to zero, the following if statement is true and the web page will display two buttons to control the output. When you click the on and off buttons, the following code runs and one of these two else if statements turns the output on or off. Now, in the drop down menu, select the auto peer mode. There's a new input field that shows up in the web page. This field allows you to type an int number from 0 to 255 to specify the number of seconds the output should remain on after motion is detected. When you change the number, it calls the following part of the code and changes the timer variable. In this mode, it only displays the input field for the timer. Select Auto LDR mode and the new input field appears. This sets the LDR threshold value and you can enter a value between 0 and 100 to indicate the percentage of luminosity. When you change this field, it calls the following part of the code to update the LDR threshold value. Selecting the Auto Peer and LDR mode activates both the Peer and LDR. It also loads a new web page with two input fields. Both input fields work the same way as we've described earlier. Lastly, there's a button to request and display temperature readings. There's also a button you can press to remove those readings. That's how you configure the settings of your multi-sensor. Then, accordingly to the mode and settings selected, another part of the loop is running to check whether the output should be on or off. For example, when motion is detected, it calls the detects movement function and starts a timer. Then, depending on the elapsed time, it turns the output on or off. There is also the following section of code to turn the output on or off, accordingly to the luminosity of the threshold value. Finally, the following snippet of code runs when the auto peer and LDR mode is selected, and motion is detected. That's pretty much how the code works. We've also put an effort to write a bunch of comments in the code to make it easier to understand. We've programmed the Wemos Multisensor Shield with this code, but you can write your own code to integrate with any home automation platform. You just need to take into account the pin assignment of the Multisensor Shield. 
click the Upload button to upload the code to your ESP. Make sure you have the right board and COM port selected. Open the serial monitor at a baud rate of 115200. Press the ESP Enable button to reset your ESP and print the ESP IP address. Open your browser and type the ESP266 IP address. This page should load. We've connected a relay module to the output terminal socket, so we're controlling a 12 volt lamp, but you can control any output that you want. Now select each mode. Try to set different settings to check if everything is working properly. That's it for this project. I hope you found this project useful and you're able to build it yourself. All the details and resources for this project can be found at randomnerdtutorials.com or click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.